What is going on? Welcome back. We got some really amazing news. I wonder if you guys have noticed the background. Yeah, that's right. My wife and I have bought our very first house, which means a lot of big changes to the channel. One of them is we have enough room in our driveway to have all our toys. And I also get a garage. <laughs> it's the best part. <laughs> so another reason why I really haven't put up any videos in the last two, three weeks, getting it prepared so that we can move in. And also school's around the corner. We wanted to get make sure that the room's all ready for the kids and that we're pretty much comfortable. Uh, so right now, that is where we are. Uh, there's still a, a couple of things that need to be done, but now I can actually focus on the garage and get that going. Let's get right into it. This driveway is massive. Okay, we still have room for a couple of more cars. This is insane. And not only that, we have the boat here with us instead of at the storage unit. We took the garage tent from the storage unit. Yes, I did purchase it, it was mine. And it is here now and the boat's there tucked away. Uh, we haven't had a chance to put the actual tarp over it. So right now it's just this uh, temporary gray tarp. Uh, so unfortunately there is some issues going on with the Yukon. I'm trying to figure them and isolate them out. As you can see, I did put the highway tires back on. For I guess for you guys who have the weed whackers or the, the, the trimmers, yeah, the weed whackers, um, the gas powered one is this especially. Uh, you know when you get the cable wire going through the sleeve from the motor to the head unit and it spins and then sometimes what ends up happening is when that cable gets really dry uh, the, the cable inside the sleeve binds and lets go and it makes that weird clicking noise uh, so that's what's happening here whenever I'm accelerating if I accelerate gentle with the Yukon it doesn't really make that noise but if I'm giving like about close to about half throttle it makes the noise and then the more throttle I give, the more noise it makes. Not only that, that there's a vibration going on. So around 60, 80 kilometers an hour, you can hear a vibration. Now I thought it might've been because the tires were wearing out, not like were wearing uneven. Um, so it sounded like sort of like tire noise. That's why, that's why I put the highway tires on the truck still making the same noise so now i know it's not the noise but then at 110 kilometers an hour 105 kilometers an hour which would be 65 to 68 miles an hour uh, i'm getting like a low tone and also vibration through the vehicle it's not coming from the engine which is a good thing but what i do really want to talk to you guys about is the garage <laughs> all right let me put in this code no i'm really happy with this thing like my wife and I, we've been working so hard to try to get where we are. And uh, it, it's been, honestly, we've been blessed with this beautiful house. All right, here we go. Now, mind you, we still, we, we haven't moved in completely. And it's a bit of, it's a bit of a mess. So please excuse that. All right, so it's not the biggest garage, but it's an awesome garage. First thing that I'm going to be doing to this garage is actually changing this right here. Uh, I have found what I've always wanted and it is that right there, the Ryobi garage opener. Now the one that I actually did want, I had like eight attachments to it. This one only has four. It will still do. I, like they don't make it anymore, which is kind of a shame because there's been so many good reviews on this thing. Uh, yeah. So am I going to do a review on it? No because this thing has been around for a really long time and there's lots of reviews on the internet. Uh, I'll give you guys like what I think about it. What are the plans for the garage? Well, first of all, I'm going to clean up and organize. <laughs> Next, um, this whole thing right here needs to be out. <laughs> I don't know what the heck that was. Uh, what was actually really cool is the boat does fit in here. Uh, you would think it was done purposely, but the motor actually fits in this spot right here, perfect as I back in. Then the swim platform fits just above those uh, exhaust pipes. Um, anyways, so stoked. All right, let's get to work and get this thing out of here. I really apologize with the garage, but I do want to show you guys what I put in there and uh, how it's going. Uh, it's a little messy, but it's not as bad as it was before, which is a good thing. Uh, let's get right in there. All right, so the first thing you guys will probably notice right away is that huge entire thing that was up there is no more. Uh, so this is where I'm actually gonna be making my bench. My bench is gonna go right across over here. Uh, so from there to here, that's gonna be solid. It's not gonna move. Um, and then from this section across, 
I'm gonna put a, a post right here. Anyway, so this is gonna be one section that, that's gonna lift, and then over here as well. Uh, the reason for that is just in case if I ever wanna put the boat in the garage, um, the boat won't actually fit with the bench there. So by being able to lift up the, the table, the motor can go slide right in there and then on the other side of the post right here that I will put the swim platform will be able to go there uh, and then after I'm going to put up some nice shelving up there so that I can store a lot more stuff uh, the bike rack is in now so the other thing that I actually did install was the Ryobi garage door this thing oh man I'm loving it so far Okay, so this is the Ryobi one and a half horsepower garage door opener. It's uh, beyond overkill for this thing. All right, so that's it for now for the garage. I'm gonna continue working on the workbench there. I just wanna apologize to everybody that I haven't posted anything for the last like four weeks. Uh, today's Wednesday, tomorrow's Thursday, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna try my best to finish up this video, edit it, and post it tomorrow, which would be for today for you guys. Um, yeah, I've just been so busy with the house getting in here. So again, like I said, this is our first house and just it's been a lot of work just to try to get things the way we wanted to. Um, but uh, so things are slowing down and now I'm in the garage. I want to get the garage done before the winter comes because honestly, I don't want to be out here in the cold working on the garage unless if I absolutely have to. Uh, so as you can see, the tent for the boat is actually up now. Uh, it's not that gray tarp that was there. Um, but it's looking actually a lot better now. Uh, before at the storage unit, it wasn't tight. It was really flappy, but it's uh, it's tight now, so which is really nice. So this is where the boat's gonna be living. What's really cool is that, really excited. <laughs> Sorry, this, this just, yeah, it, you could see the excitement in my face. Uh, so now what I can make sure is before we go out on any boating trips, which I think we're gonna start doing some night trips uh, just before the, just before the winter kicks in, there's a couple of things that I need to install into this boat for that reason of uh, doing night, some night trips or some night fishing or evening fishing. Um, I, uh, I'm not gonna spoil, the, spoil that one for you guys. But the whole thing that I'm really excited about is that now I can keep these batteries charged and not worry about going on the water with like semi-dead batteries or whatever. So at the storage unit, I didn't have a power source. I was actually looking into getting some solar panels and getting a trickle charger or, or charger for the, the storage unit. Uh, but I don't need to do that now because ran my extension wire from the garage to my charger and uh, hook them up to the batteries. So I already charged the one side over there and then I'm charging this side over here. Now I'm trying to figure out to see if there's a way to charge both batteries instead of charging one at a time. But at the same time, with this system that I have here, the Blue Sea kill switch and this thing, uh, the MACR. Anyways, if you guys, any of you guys out there know how to wire up both batteries so that all I just have to do is plug in that charger, to plug in that charger, just a one-time thing, and both batteries will be charged. Please let me know, that'd be awesome. I'm still trying to figure that out. I think I might have to put another battery switch. I don't know. But like I said, if you guys know, leave a comment down below for me, please. That, 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 that will help me out. Uh, I'm gonna run over and see how that battery is charged or not. Uh, I know that the other one is, and it's same with this one. That's that. Oh, another thing, yes, that I did find out is that the motor, is that the motor on the boat is actually sitting too low. I am gonna have to raise it. I might actually have to raise it two holes up. All right, here, let me just show you what I'm talking about. We set it right here, um, pretty much there. I, I was going by what the force motor is, but I think I might have to bring it right here. Uh, so what's happening is when we're on the water and we try to get up onto plane, you know, once we get onto plane, this is actually this this part of the boat is actually on top of the water. So the water is rushing right here, and what's happening is that as the water is rushing here, instead of hitting on this part of the lower unit, it's actually hitting this part. So if you look at this part right here, this is almost like a knife edge, and then over here, it's round. So what's happening right now, as the water rushes off the bottom of the boat, it's actually hitting this up here, which is causing uh, drag and also suction. So this is actually pulling the back of the boat into the water, also causing drag, which the motor is working a lot harder. And 
it at, with that said you lose your speed and also you lose uh, more fuel so what i'm going to do is i need to lift it up so either in line or flush with the cavitation plate which is this plate or just below it uh, so that way you get the knife edge cutting the water and you get a very air water dynamic uh, follow through through the, uh, like a flow through the water less drag more fuel efficiency and top speed better top speed so, so that's probably one of the major reasons why we couldn't get the top speed or couldn't get any faster speeds with this motor all right so what's happening with the yukon that vibration the really bad vibration that was happening at around 80 kilometers an hour actually uh, got fixed but there's still another vibration so the major vibration what was happening was the front two bearings was uh they were pretty much gone actually one of them was gone the pass the front passenger side bearing went uh it was really really bad and then the driver's side front bearing was on its way going where i'm living now there's a mechanic who deals with a lot of four by fours and off-road vehicles and trucks so i figured you know what that would probably be the best place to take this yukon to figure out what the final vibration and final of what's going on uh so they did and they're saying that it's probably the drive shaft most likely the drive shaft with the you i was gonna say yokes no it's with the u joints um drive shaft is pretty old u joints are pretty old <laughs> and most likely what ended up happening is what they were saying is that uh, the weights for balancing the the drive shaft would probably flew off and also that with the u-joints is probably worn out so i found a place that uh, balances and basically refurbishes refurbishes the u-joints or re refurbishes the the drive shaft uh, so i am going to probably uh, most likely do a video on that one taking out that drive shaft and sending it down over to the guys into the city uh, to get that redone for all you new subscribers thank you so much uh, it's really awesome to to see that you guys are putting up with me and uh, subscribing definitely definitely there's going to be a lot of a lot more content in the future um this this right here is a blessing for myself and my my family and my kids and my wife uh, we are super super stoked about what's coming uh, a lot of trips that uh, my buddy mark and i and also my wife and i are planning to do uh, we are so stoked and again thank you so much for subscribing uh, thank you for all you new subscribers and also all you uh, original subscribers guys this is so so amazing and i want to thank you so much uh, with all the new subscribers you guys are encouraging me to get in there do this and show you what's going on whether it's the yukon and whether it's the boat awesome to be able to share it with you guys and uh yeah i want to get out there and let's do some more stuff anyways if you guys want if you guys want to see uh, more videos on the progress of the garage let me know until then as always stay safe and who knows maybe we'll see you out there